Hey again, everyone. Uh, recording day is a cold, rainy, windy, and even a little bit of thunder day here. So uh, that thunder is right on cue with my my Devo. Uh, so recently, I read two chapters in the book of Exodus back to back, and uh, when I read them that way, something struck me that I, I wanted to bring with you today. So we will be in Exodus chapter 18 uh, as we start today, but before we do, let's go ahead and pray over it first. Lord, uh, we just thank you that you are an almighty God. Uh, your ways are, are right and they're true. I pray, Lord, that as we just... Uh, sit together with this Devo today that you would guide my words and let it let it be uh, your Holy Spirit that does so. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. So in the last Devo I did with you guys, uh, we looked at Moses being called by God to confront Pharaoh and to lead the Israelites out of Egypt. By the time we get to chapter 18, many things have happened since that calling. And Moses is a man that God spoke directly to, and he's a man that God performed mighty signs through. And he's now a man that an entire nation of people is following out to a complete desert wilderness. And in chapter 18, they're at the mountain of God, and his father-in-law meets him out there. His, his name is Jethro. Now, Jethro is a wise man, uh, and he observes something that he believes is not wise. And what we see happening is that Moses is serving, serving as judge in the disputes of the people of Israel, and so they would line up uh, and have Moses deal with case after case. The Bible says morning until evening. So let's go ahead and read in Exodus chapter 18, verse 14. It says, When Moses' father-in-law saw all that he was doing for the people, he said, What is this that you are doing for the people? Why do you sit alone and all the people stand around you from morning till evening? And Moses said to his father-in-law, Because the people come to me to inquire of God, when they have a dispute, they come to me and I decide between one person and another. And I make them known the statutes of God and his laws. Moses' father-in-law said to him, What are you doing, or what you are doing is not good. You and the people with you will certainly wear yourselves out, for the thing is too heavy for you. You are not able to do it alone. So Jethro continues to give Moses sound advice, and Moses follows that advice. Now think about that. Moses, the man to whom God spoke directly, the man who worked incredible signs, he listens to advice that directly questions how he is leading. And Moses listens to him, and he follows that advice. And that's an important lesson for any of us. No matter how long we've been a Christian, no matter how many things God has done through us, it's a good idea for us to order our lives in such a way that we have trusted people around us who can give us sound advice. Proverbs 12, 15 says, The way of, of a fool is right in his own eyes, but a wise man listens to advice. So, that was Exodus chapter 18. And then I went on to read Exodus 19, which seemed logical. Exodus 19 shows that the Israelites were moving to the desert of Sinai, and there God summons the people of Israel. Uh, they, uh, he summons the people of Israel through Moses to come before him. And there's a, a whole lot of fear and trembling involved in this. The people are consecrating themselves, they're washing their clothes for cleansing, there's smoke, there's fire, uh, maybe some thunder, and there was the threat of losing your life if, God, if you approach God in an unworthy manner. God was about to speak. So in chapter 18, 
you had man. You had a wise man, a man that was able to give wise enough counsel to completely change the way that Moses governed the people. In chapter 19, you have God. God is about to give counsel. He's, about, he's going to give the Ten Commandments. And it should be regarded in a completely different manner. We didn't see Moses washing his clothes and consecrating himself before he went in before Jethro. What Jethro spoke to Moses was good, but it should not be confused with God's own word. So for us, more than ever, there's a lot of voices that speak into our lives. There can be completely wrong voices, uh, there can be intelligent, educated voices that miss the mark. There can be wise and godly voices. And there can be God's voice. There can be God's word. God has tasked you and I with navigating those waters. And he watches how each of us chooses which voices we listen to when, and why we listen to them. Now, if we've started to treat God's word as just another voice among equals, remember the thunderous power with which God spoke in chapter 19. He is not to be trifled with. His word is not to be trifled with. God is not some old grandfather who has some adorable wisdom that we can pick and choose from. He gives us his word and he expects us to listen and it will change our lives. He bid the Israelites to come toward him, and he wants that relationship, but he lets us choose the voices that speak into our lives. Thankfully, he hasn't left us alone to do that. And when the Israelites came to the mountain, they could only come so far because of his God's fearful power and his holiness. But through the blood of Jesus dying on the cross for our sins, we have been made righteous and we can come all the way to the throne room of God. The Holy Spirit bids us to do that. With that glorious invitation to come to God, would we ever dare let his word become just another voice among voices? Well, it's easier to go down that path than it would seem and it can creep up on us. So today, this is a reminder to place God's voice in that preeminent position in your life. So let's pray that the Holy Spirit would help us to do that. Lord, this is especially a time when we need your wisdom. Uh, there's many dilemmas that are hitting us that we can't answer on our own. And there's a lot of thoughts about how to, to solve those dilemmas. And there's a lot of thoughts about how to react to different problems. But I pray, Lord, that you would just give us your wisdom, help us to listen to your voice and to react in the way that you show us to react and, and to take the path that you show us. I pray, Lord, that you would be our guide. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, guys, thanks for joining me, and we'll see you the next time.